So this is an ethics question for three marks. And it actually breaks it down for you in terms of what the three marks are for, because it says identify one other ethical issue that should have been addressed in this study. It says one other because in the STEM it says that participants all gave their consent before taking part. So you can't talk about consent. So it's a little bit, you know, trying to throw a few people off, although it didn't affect anybody that one luckily then the second mark is for explaining why it should have been addressed and then the third mark is for how it could have been dealt with so that it wasn't an ethical issue anymore so you could have had many different things so in the marker scheme it suggested confidentiality it suggested protection from harm it suggested right to withdraw so let's do Let's do one of those and then I might do another one. Let's see, let's do right to withdraw. So, um, right to withdraw should have been addressed in this study um, because, now, this is the part where people lost marks, so they're explaining why it should have been addressed. People were generally good at identifying the ethical issue and were generally good at explaining how it could be done, um, but it was more difficult, I suppose, to explain why it should have been addressed. So in terms of why to right withdraw, if you think about it, if you, if you take part in a study and you've, I mean, I, I suppose really as well, they've only really given the consent, they've not really given their informed consent, so you could make a point about that. But anyway, you've, you've taken part in a study and you, you kind of, you know, think that it's going to be OK or whatever. But you arrive there and you realise, actually, you don't want to go through with it. You don't want to do it. You don't, you know, maybe this different location business is somewhere that is in an area where you don't want to go, for example. And so you should be given the right to withdraw whenever you feel like it but if you're not given that right to withdraw you might feel like you can't leave because you've already agreed to do it so it's almost kind of like pressuring people into continuing even though they don't want to which is kind of against their human rights it's not really ethical to do that to somebody so that's kind of what you need to get across in this explanation bit so let's see if I can put this into words under pressure. So it should be addressed in this study um, because um, a participant may decide that they are uncomfortable with the, uh, with the study um, halfway through. And as they've not been given a right to withdraw may feel should continue even though they do not want to um, this just this study because participants decide that they are uncomfortable with the study halfway through and as they've not been given a right to withdraw they may feel pressure to continue even though they do not want to um this could have been dealt dealt with by reminding the participant or by outlining in the brief to the participant that they can leave at any time without penalty or consequence, reminding them of this throughout the study. So you get a mark for a right to withdraw you get in a mark for explaining why and a mark for explaining how it could have been dealt with. So that is the right to withdraw one. Notice how I've gone into quite a bit of detail here. So this is the bit where people were dropping marks because this just was a bit vague and a bit like it was like you knew the ethical issue and you knew why 
it had you knew kind of like that it had to be dealt with but you you didn't really kind of know why or maybe you did know why but you just weren't writing it down so that kind of needs to be explained there because essentially you, you you're forcing your participants into something that they don't want to do because they feel like they can't leave because you haven't reminded them that they're allowed to because you know they're not researchers they don't know that they can leave at any time but you know that as a researcher so it's your responsibility and duty under ethical guidelines to ensure that they are aware of that and they know that and then the how it could be dealt with a lot of people mentioned um outlining the right to withdraw in the debrief it's not right that because the the right to withdraw if you do it at the beginning of the study it's in what's called a brief that's when you give them the kind of instructions and stuff like that you can actually mention giving them the right to withdraw their data in a debrief that's fine so on here i'll add that actually um and that's um additionally in a debrief them that they can uh, data if they choose so you can have that now i'll do another one for you so let's see um confidentiality quite a few people said this one I'm not going to do protection from harm because <laughs> this study is in a lab and it's looking at word lists in same and different environments. I don't think that there's anything about that that's really going to cause them that much harm. So that would be a little bit more difficult to explain this middle bit and also maybe how you would how you would deal with that. So I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do confidentiality because that one's probably an easy one. So notice as well how your choice of points, some are easier than others to explain depending on what the kind of experiment is. So be wise in what you pick in. Just pick an easy one. Don't try and like, you know, show off. Like just pick an easy one and then you'll get marks. So confidentiality should have been addressed in the study because a participant um, may feel um embarrassed about their performance on the word lists. Do you know what I've realised actually in the previous question? I've not really linked it very much to the study. Maybe I should just um comfortable with with I'm gonna put recalling word lists halfway through perhaps because perform perhaps because they um achieve a low score i want to use that again in this one actually as well um um and because I just may feel embarrassed about the performance on the word lists, perhaps because they achieve a low score, and so would prefer to remain unknown. Wow, I spelt it right. I never spell that word right. <laughs> um, This could be dealt with by uh, giving or well, allocating is a better word. Allocating um, code names or numbers for participants or referring to them with initials such as 
Somebody actually put KF um, in their example, which is great because that's what is used in a lot of the memory kind of uh, case studies. HM as well, they use initials rather than code names or whatever. Uh, little hands in, in Freud study is a pseudonym. So you could have mentioned a pseudonym as well, which is like just a, another name for somebody like little Albert, for example, when we did the phobia, it's not actually called Albert. Um, so you just, you, you just pick a different name for, for the child or whatever. And this could have been dealt with by allocating code names and numbers for participants referring to them with initials. Or not collecting um, identifiable data such as names. I think that's it. I'm not sure interested in this study because participants may feel embarrassed with the forms on the word list as so all preferred to remain anonymous. This could have been dealt with by allocating core names, numbers for participants or friends. Yeah, that's it, I think. So there you go. You could have had confidentiality, you could have had right to withdraw. Um, you could have added another one, but I would just go with one of those just for ease sake. Um, 